Hi, welcome to Tuesday morning's edition of our virtual, our virtual uh, tours of the museum. My name is Brad Bertelli. I'm the curator here at the Keys History and Discovery Center. Now today is a big day in the nonprofit world. It is Giving Tuesday Now, a new global day of giving and unity that is an emergency response to the unprecedented need caused by COVID-19. Our doors have been closed while you all have been staying safer at home. However, the team here at the Discovery Center has been working hard to bring the museum to you with a variety of live virtual programs. On Giving Tuesday Now, we are asking for contributions, no matter the amount, to support the virtual programming that is helping us share our mission, both here in our community and across the virtual world. And thanks to two matching gifts that have been pledged, any contribution you make is tripled for today only. If you are able, please consider making a donation through the donate, through the donate button on this video. Now, we're going to continue with our uh, little history lesson today, and today we're going to talk about the wrecking industry. Now, the wreckers have long since uh, gotten a bad, a, a, a bad reputation. They're, they've been long considered a little better than pirates, and perhaps early on in their history, that was probably more to the case, and uh, we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, but the the fact of the matter was that the wreckers were the first responders of their day. There was no Coast Guard. There were, the Navy wasn't you know, going up and down the reef line making sure everybody was safe, but the wreckers were sailing up and down the reef looking for people in, who, are, who had wrecked, who, who were in need of help. Now, the earliest wreckers were the Aboriginal people who you know, all of a sudden were watching these these ships sailing across the horizon and after storms, you know, debris would, would be washing up on shore and able boatsmen that they were, they would go out to the boats and, you know, and salvage the things that, that they needed that they could. Now in 1622, after, uh, after the Spanish New Spain fleet uh, wrecked, um, the, the Spanish did, did hire some of the Indians to go out there and salvage, help salvage, the, help salvage these ships. Now, when this was a Spanish territory still, uh, the, the wreckers were largely Bahamians um, and they were Spanish. So the Bahamians would come to, to a wreck site, they would salvage, salvage the wreck and then go home to Nassau where the wreck and, and the cargo and everything that was recovered would be auctioned off and taken you know, to Britain to, you know, to the British. Now for the Spanish, all the, uh, the, the wreckers would be coming out of Havana, they would salvage their, their goods and then taking them back to Havana, and so, the, so Spain would get the spoils of, of the cargo. Now, when the Florida Territory uh, was purchased by uh, America, the United States, in 1821 with the Adams-Onis Treaty, one of the early things that the government did was uh, declare that any, because along with the reef, the territory and the Florida Keys, the Florida Reef was also part of that, part of that, of that deal. Um, now, what, you know, what the government did early on in 1825 was declare that any, any uh, cargo that was salvaged on the Florida Reef in American territory had to be brought to an American port of, of entry. Now, in 1825, there were two port of entries on the East Coast. That would be St. Augustine and in Key West. Um, now, before, uh, in 18, between 1823 and 1825, um, before uh, the first salvage laws came in, in, into existence, it was really more of a free-for-all. The, the cargo rewards, the salvage awards for, for cargo would be between 57 and 95 percent of the value of the cargo in the ship. Um, and, and what the deal was, the, uh, the salvage people, the salvage, the salvagers, um, the wreckers, would bring their, their goods back to port and there would be a, a, a jury of five people. Who would who would find you know figure out how the how the salvage reward reward would be issued? Um, two people were chosen by the um, captain of the wrecked ship. Two people were chosen by the wreck master, those in charge of of salvaging salvaging the uh, uh, the wreck. And then one person was uh, chosen by the justice of the peace or the or the notary uh, Repub notary public for, for that area. Now in 1825, um, 
the first set of wrecking laws came into effect. And what is interesting um, is that one of the laws stated that it, it was illegal to burn a, uh, a, a lighthouse or, or present a false light. And that's one of the things that a lot of people uh, think about the wreckers is they would put false lights out to lure ships into the reef so they would wreck. And there's not a whole lot of actual um, evidence of that happening. Probably did happen with the Bahamians and the uh, Spanish prior to this becoming an American territory. Um, well, in 1828, uh, the first, uh, the first um, a maritime court, uh, a salvage court, was established in Key West. Uh, Judge, uh, Judge Webb was assigned jurisdiction down there. And for the first time, um, uh, you know, the, the salvage awards were, were uh, established in, in a court of law in Key West. Um, now, Wrecking wasn't just a free-for-all out on the reef. You know, there were laws and, and there were rules to be abided by. And the wreckers were actually licensed by the court system. You had to go apply for a license so not anybody could, could go out there and perform this, the, the, the salvage operation to be a wrecker. You had to have a, a ship that was in tip-top shape. You had to be well-provisioned. You had to have a good crew that were, that were capable. And if you weren't the the master or captain of the wreck ship could challenge the, the cargo, the salvage award in court. And there, there was a, a case, for instance, in, um, in uh, the Key Biscayne area where uh, there was a bunch of rum involved on, on the wreck and, and a lot of the wreckers started drinking the rum instead of, instead of working hard and salvaging the, the cargo. So once they got back to Key West, the master of the, of the wreck ship presented that evidence in court and Judge Webb uh, declared that the wreckers had already drank in their their, their rewards, so no further money was given to them. Now, um, the last, you know, the golden age of wrecking was really the 1850s and 1860s, right before all the lighthouses, the reef, reef lighthouses that carries forward and Alligator and, and Sand Key uh, began to, you know, be erected to help normalize, you know, help to warn mariners. And also the ships were, were switching from just sail power to steam, so there, there was more control for the captains. Uh, the last big wreck of the wrecking era was in 1905, and at that point, um, the wrecking really wasn't a, uh, a, a, a big business anymore. In 1911, uh, I'm sorry, 1921, the the wrecking license office in Key West closed down. And in the late 1960s, the last wrecker ever uh, to, you know, to possess an actual uh, license from the court system in Key West passed away in, in 1960, and that kind of put an end to all of, of, of the wrecking, um, that, of the, you know, the, the wrecking uh, salvage uh, 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 job. I can't think of the word there. <laughs> um, but um, but it, will, it will be replaced by more in, new industries coming to Key West, sponging and shrimping and cigars and a, a host of boom and bust industries. Now that's going to be it for today's lesson on, uh, on wrecking. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today. Don't forget today is Giving Tuesday now, and we have those two matching gifts we're hoping to maximize and make your contribution go even further. If you are able to donate, uh, please help us support uh, our, our great facility. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now, um, tomorrow night we are starting something new. It's Cocktails with the... We have a question. Oh, we have a question. Go ahead. I would like to know what kind of value were these wrecks worth? Um, depending on the cargo, depending on if the ship was lost, uh, it could be, you know, a thousand dollars. It could be, I, I'm trying to think of the number in my head, one of the largest wrecks ever, salvage claims. The number 49,000 comes to mind, but that might be significantly lower. But these were in terms of, you know, in 1860, 1870s, so it's really a lot of money. And wrecking was the industry that built Key West and made it the richest city per capita in um, not only Florida, but, but in the U.S. at one point. Okay. All right. Um, Back to cocktails and All right. So, uh, so tomorrow night, from between 5 and 6, we're starting a new program called Cocktails with the Curator. I'll be sitting there having a cold beer, and uh, hopefully you'll be having a, a drink at home. It's, you, you'll need to register 
to participate. There's limited uh, occupancy. Um, and you can find that information on our Facebook page. It'll be an hour-long open discussion. You can call in, and or, or, or uh, we'll, we'll be on camera together. Ask any question you'd like. If I'm able, I'm, I'll, I'll answer it for you. If I'm not, I won't lie to you, because I hate that. Um, in the meantime, Thursday morning, we'll be back here at the museum doing another virtual tour of one of our exhibits for a piece of history. And then on Friday, we'll again be doing our, uh, our Friday field trips, which was wildly uh, uh, popular on last Friday. And on uh, Friday, we'll be talking about the history of, of the original town site of Isla Mirada. So until tomorrow night, we will see you uh, hopefully uh, between 5 and 6 for Cocktails with the Curator. And then we will proceed on Thursday morning. So I'll see you then.